It has an old school feel tonight, Corey. Mm. We're back here on the grass, on the side. I can't Bob, believe it. Bobby Bowden Field, the Doe Campbell Stadium. It's been a minute. It's been a minute also since Florida State started the season with a dub. Mm. They had to schedule Duquesne to do it, but the Knolls opened the 2022 season with a 47-7 victory. Right before a monster truck rally happened here on <laughs> Doe, at Doe Campbell Stadium. So we got, we're getting this in right before they start that. Hey, man, it's better than the, whatever was going on in the streets man, when we were knows? out there. Yeah, the there's, we, we didn't like them streets. Last couple of years, but uh, Florida State takes care of business. They come out, have a 90-minute weather delay, come out and score on their first six drives. Every drive that Jordan Travis was in there. Four touchdowns and two field goals. Uh, he comes out, Tate throws a pick, yeah. but they still get the win. They close the game strong, 47-7. to seven. The running backs were the big story. Yeah. Uh, but probably the W, just starting a season with a win might be the bigger story. Yeah, as I wrote in the column that you can read on uh, Warchan.com right now. It's a, you know, as, as you know, it's been since 2016, and a lot has yeah. changed around yeah. here since the last time Florida State won a season opener. Um, so... Just to, I know it's Duquesne, guys. I know it's not Ole Miss when you're down 28 to six. I know it's not Pittsburgh when you got uh, your debut and your freshman quarterback. But it is a win on a season. Uh, it's a win in a season opener. And go in six years, where you you're the only Power Five team in the country that had not won a season opener since 2016. To get that monkey off your back a little bit, it just feels good to be one and zero. Who was it? it? Utah State or something? I don't remember. I might have made that stat up. I, I can't <laughs> remember. Oregon I know State. Oregon, Oregon State. State. There you go. So, so getting the win, looking like they did too, man. And I know we can we can poo poo, uh, and you love to poo poo. I always do. But we can poo poo Duquesne and and how good they are, and that was obviously they were overmatched physically. But you know we've seen this team kind of sleep with this yeah. program. Sorry, not this team, but this program sleepwalk against teams they should beat, teams that they are physically superior than, including an FCS team last year. If you remember how that one went, so to go out and dominate, to be up. What are they up, 33 to nothing? And yeah. then and win by 40 points and run for 400 yards? Good. That's what you're supposed to do. And that is a positive step. It's something you're supposed to do. Go out and dominate a game. Yeah, it was 26 to nothing at halftime. And 26 points may not sound like a ton, but they kind of squandered a couple of touchdown opportunities. It's also five drives. They didn't, five, have, time, they didn't yeah. have the ball a lot. Duquesne kind of ran some clock. But it was. It, they also settled for a couple of field goals. They probably could have punched in with a little bit better execution. They had a penalty on one of them. Yeah. But also, they came back out in the second half – and, and that's a perfect situation where you just want to tell Jordan Travis, man, go out, get a touchdown, and get your baseball cap on and go stand on the sideline yeah. and let the backups play. And they did that. Yeah. A lot of times, the, you know, again, this program has not gotten that score, and now you end up leaving the starters in even longer. Um, so I think that, you know, it's like all the things you wanted to see, that was another checkbox taking care of business and getting off the field. Well, and I like, look, man, I, I think we, we kind of forget sometimes because of uh, Trey Benson um, how good Trayshawn Ward can be. And, again, I, I, well, the caveats are gone. I'm going to say it one more time. We know it's Duquesne. But uh, I thought he looked really good. He ran hard. I think he's, a, he's kind of a slept-on running back because everybody's so excited about Trey Benson. But then you saw why everybody's excited about Trey Benson. That's a kid that's run for 22 yards in his career, and he had 100 tonight. Toa Feely, man, Toa Feely has, in my opinion, I thought he was the, be- the most impressive of the three backs in the preseason. And he carried that right over, man. He's got that wiggle. He's got a – who Trayshawn say – or Trey Benson say he's got, like, the dead leg. Right. Like, he just makes those moves. They, they, they all have a, a little different styles. And, obviously, they're probably not going to all run for 100 yards against LSU. That's a bold statement. We'll see. If they do, boy, buddy, come on, man. Uh, I'm throwing gumbo on myself. I'm throwing <laughs> everything on myself if that happens. But they, I thought you saw why, why Mike Norvell is so excited about that trio because they all bring something unique. And I think they're all good running backs, man. I don't think it's just they looked good against Duquesne. I think those three guys are good running backs. And Rodney Hill's not too bad either. Yeah, the freshman no got in late. I think he had nine carries for 50-something yards uh, and a touchdown. But also the offensive line. I mean, yeah. you know, again, you have to give credit to the running backs because they made a lot of those plays. But the offensive line, they must have played – Five, six different combinations tonight, and Mike Norvell but the, said. In the, part, with the starting lineup, I think they played four different, right. uh, four different combinations. And Mike Norvell said part of that was by design. They did want to work at a guy like Jazden Turnitine, who played tackle at South Carolina, transferred in. They had him at, at several positions tonight. Um, Dylan Gibbons, who starts at left guard, they had him snapping when Darius Washington went out. We don't have any kind of report on the update of Darius Washington, uh, so we'll have to see. We'll probably find out more about that in the next couple, couple of days. Um, but they also, you know, just moved a bunch of guys different spots. Bless Harris played right tackle and left tackle. Julian Armella, the freshman, got in at left tackle. They also played a lot of those young guys. I mean, uh, and again, we mentioned uh, the young running back, but but 
Azaria Thomas played yeah. a lot at cornerback. Uh, Omar Graham played a good bit at linebacker. You saw a lot of those young defensive linemen play as well. Yeah, you did. And I, and, uh, and I thought the defense, man, look, they, they I, I can't remember my man's name. He's been there for 18 years. He's a legend in Duquesne. I can't remember the head coach's Stole name. Schmitty. But he had an idea to come here, get his money, and go home. Like, they were not, they were not going to be elongating the game. They, they were running into the line. Don't When you drop back, do not sit there forever. So there weren't going to be a, bit, a lot of big sack numbers. And I, I just thought that uh, they shortened the game like they should. But the defense, I thought, played well. They weren't uh, overwhelming physically, like defensively. But, I mean, would they run for 80 yards on 30 carries? They did next to nothing. Um, they, had a, they had less than 200 yards of offense. And their only touchdown came on the uh, essentially after the Tate Rodemaker interception. So, uh, but, but I thought the defense was good. I thought it was fine. I don't know what you can carry over from the defensive performance going into next week, but offensively, what I want to see, what, we, what we'll need to see throughout the week is Johnny Wilson's health. Because again, you saw in one play the kind of guy he can be. Um, he is not just a plodding six foot seven big body dude. Like he, he can run a little bit and he can get inside you. And once he's inside you, it doesn't matter how good a corner you are. If the ball's laid up for him, he's probably going to come down with it because he's six foot seven. So we got to see his health for the, the rest of the week. We did ask Norvell after the game. Um, he said they'll see. He said he was a little gimpy coming off that field, but didn't seem all yeah. that concerned yeah, they, necessarily. When they, they had his ankle taped um, after yeah. the injury, and it looked like he was going to give it a go. He was warming up on the sideline, and I think they decided, look, you got LSU next week. Let's not take any chances here in this game against I think he team. was in the tent so long they had scored twice by the time he came out, came out of it. And, but he really was like kind of hopping around, like, and he had his gloves still on and his helmet still on. Like, he kind of wanted to go back in the game. And then, yeah, I mean, you're already up 20 to nothing. You, they need you a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, next week. And so I was going to ask you, what, if you had some negatives, and there aren't a ton – uh, when you win a game by 40 points. But were there any for you? Yeah, the big one, and you wrote about it in your column. Again, people could read it at warchant.com. If you're not a subscriber, it's one buck. One dollar. As one I dollar. said, Court, it's the best dollar they'll ever spend. The best dollar anybody's ever spent in the history oh, of dollars. Unless you hit the lottery. That's right. my one right. caveat. Right. So that is a caveat. Otherwise, it's the best dollar. One dollar, warchant.com. Uh, you know, Tate Rodemaker. You know, we've been talking yeah. about Tate uh, in the preseason. We talked about some in the spring. Uh, and he has looked good at times. But the interception he had was very much, and it was a fourth down pass, but it was very much kind of the interceptions he's had. There are times where it's not open, he'll, he'll force it. Yeah. And it's and it's one of those things that you kind of accepted in year one, maybe even in year two. Tate, you're in year three now. You need to be smarter with the football and more accurate. Um, yes. He just needs to be a more accurate passer. And we've seen him do it over there on the practice fields. We wanted to see him translate it to the field here tonight. And now you've got the fan base wanting A.J. Duffy. Well, and I, it's whether you want A.J. Duffy or not, you don't want either of them, honestly. You, you want 13 to stay healthy. But if 13 goes down, whether it's a quarter, a, a series, a game, a month, who knows, you got to have something that looks better than what Rodemaker did. And very limited sample size. He, he threw five passes. But his first pass is knocked down at the line. His second pass is picked. He threw another pass on, on two possessions later that should have been picked. It was late. He didn't get out. He just didn't look like the guy that is over there. And that's what worries you is, okay, man, we know, we know it's there. We know it's in him. But is he going to be a kid that comes on the lights and, and doesn't play the way he practices? Because there are people like that. And if he's one of those guys, you can't count on him. And you need to be able to count on your backup quarterback at some point this season. And that's what this game could have been used for. Like if he goes out there and looks good, looks like he did, carries it over. He builds himself up with confidence. Now, it doesn't really matter necessarily what the fans' confidence is in Tate Rodemaker. It's what his confidence is in himself. And I don't know that that's exactly sky high after throwing a pick on his second pass of his season. The other, you know, I think when you talk about defensively, there wasn't a lot of pressure on the quarterback because, like you said, uh, apparently Duquesne's offense, they will do more three-step drops, five-step yeah. drops. But tonight, it was all one-step drops. And, and Jared Verse talked about it after the game. They literally just they never, they knew early on they weren't going to get any opportunities yeah. uh, to get pressure on him. Jared Verse did get his first sack um, as a Florida State Seminole, so yes. that was good. A lot of those transfers, I mean, Tatum Bethune, we saw him come out of blitz and get a uh, tackle for loss. Yeah. Um, you know, Greedy Vance played a good bit after Jarian Jones had his – that was probably one other thing that was well, a Well, don't do that anymore, Jarian. Get that out of your system, too. <laughs> it's, uh, no, he's been a frequent uh, offender of that. But, um, you know, those transfers, I thought, you know, Johnny be Johnny uh, Wilson, we saw him until he got hurt. Trey Benson, Deuce obviously. Span made every catch thrown to him and, made, and showed some wiggle and some, some speed. And some versatility yeah. of yeah. catches. And Micah Pittman, you know, four catches, I think, as well. So that, that transfer class, we expected to make a big contribution. The, and and another one other than Rodemaker, because, again, it's a backup quarterback, which is something you'd complain about in a 40-point win. Um, Got to go catch the punts, guys. Uh, we, we can't, this can't be just the story tradition of Florida State not catching punts. The guy did not punt well. There were a lot of low-line drives. 
go catch one. Go catch them. Uh, the kick return game wasn't very good. These are things that have to get better, man. They have to get better. You have to be able to return kicks past your 18-yard line or just fair catch them all. And they practice it too much to against against a team like Duquesne get out to the 15-yard line. That's that's all. That that was that was disappointing. Um, Rodemaker's effort, although again limited sample size, was disappointing. But everything else I thought was was a, was as much positive as you can take against a team like Duquesne. And they were physical, and they dominated, and that's what Norvell said. They dominated. Yeah, so if you, if, if Mike Norvell had a checklist of things he wanted to see tonight, I'd say most of them got checked off. They, and he gets to see us doing a, a show from here. He hasn't gotten to see this in his tenure. On Bobby Bowden Field, he gets to see Iron Corey, and that has not happened in his tenure. It really hasn't. No. This is the first time he's going to get to see us do what we do, not in a parking lot. No. Not with vagrants walking by. Right, not shouting at us and throwing stuff at us. No, right here. Right here where Peter Warwick used to play. Corey keep, and Ira. Keep winning games, Mike. Next Please. time we'll be doing it at the Superdome. We're going to be doing it at his house if he keeps <laughs> winning games. For Corey Clark, Aslan, Austin, this is Ira. Stay tuned to WarChant.com. Come off that dollar and subscribe.